this lesson, we're going to quickly look at the equations of circles. Just like how we have lines and equations of lines, y equals mx plus b is the slope y-intercept form of an equation of a line, there are equations of circles as well. And we're going to focus on circles that center around the point 0, 0. Unlike any other shape, circles are unique in the fact that the distance from the center of the circle to any other point on the circle is the same. We call these line segments the radius. And no matter which direction we put a radius, whether it's to that side or that side or even down this way, that radius is the same length no matter which direction you go. That radius is what defines the circle. How big is that radius or how small is that radius? That will differentiate between one circle to the next. And the way to figure out the length of that radius is something we've already seen when we looked at the length of a line segment. The length from 0, 0 to any point on the circle can be found using Pythagorean theorem. We've seen that we could use Pythagorean theorem for the length of a line segment by figuring out the distances that are horizontal and the distances that are vertical to create a right angle triangle. And then from there, using Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared to figure out our length of the radius. Well, for a circle, that length of the radius is going to be the same no matter which radius we talk about or which right angle triangle we create. So if we call this horizontal length the length x because it's the horizontal distance of that line, and we call this the length y, it's the vertical distance of that line, we get to this point up here, which is the point x, y. This will always be the point x, y, because it, we're starting from the point 0, 0. So the difference between here and here is x minus 0, which is always x. This relationship, or Pythagorean relationship, is what defines every circle, and it's what defines the equation of a circle x squared plus y squared equals r squared. It's the Pythagorean theorem, but now we're saying that r, the radius of the circle, is what's going to change. Just like in a linear equation, y equals mx plus b, the y and the x always are constant in the equation. It's the m and the b values that always change. For an equation of a circle, these x and y values stay the same. The only thing that will change is this r value. What is the radius of the circle? Again, the radius is what defines one circle from another. So let's relook at this circle that we've drawn on the diagram on the left. We are told that one of the points on the circle here is the point 5, 0. This helps us figure out what the other points around the circle could be as well. We know that this point up here is going to be the point 0, 5. We know this because the radius from the center to any edge of the circle has to be the same length. So from here to here is 5 units. From the center to up here also has to be 5 units. We can say that this value down here has to be the point 0, negative 5. And that fourth point over here is going to be the point negative 5, 0. Well now, how do we define the equation of this circle? Well, the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared, where r is the radius. We can see that the circle has a radius of 5. It goes out 5 units from the center. So the equation of the circle will be x squared plus y squared equals 5 squared, where 5 is our radius. Well, this will be simplified. We'll now write it as x squared plus y squared equals 25. And that is our equation of the circle. Here's an interesting type of question. Does the point 4, negative 9 lie inside, outside, or on the circle x squared plus y squared equals 100? Before we begin, let's figure out what the circle x squared plus y squared equals 100 looks like. 
Again, we know that the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So if we have x squared plus y squared equals 100, what is the radius of our circle? We know that 100 has to be the same as our r squared. So what value, if squared, will then equal 100? I picked a nice easy number here for our example because we can see that the square root of 100 is 10. So the radius of this circle is 10. The common mistake you'll often see is that we assume this number here is the radius. But it's not the radius, it's the radius squared. So you do need to square root this number to get the proper radius. Well, let's now draw our circle with a radius of 10. Notice how it will hit the blocks 10 units in either direction from the center. So this will be 10 on the x axis here, 10 on the y axis up here, negative 10 down here, and negative 10 over here. We want to know if the point 4, negative 9 lies inside, outside, or on this circle. Well, if we graph the circle, it'll be pretty easy for us to figure out if this point lies inside, outside, or on it. So let's figure out where this point is to graph it. The point 4, negative 9 is 4 along the x-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, and down 9 on the, on the y-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, oh, it's right down here. Now that looks like it could be on the circle. It looks like maybe it could be inside the circle. It's tough to tell. It sort of seems like it won't be outside the circle. Well, how algebraically could we figure this out? We're going to do a formal check to see whether or not this point lies inside, outside, or on the circle. And to do a formal check, we always do a left side, right side check. So let's take our equation of our circle here, x squared plus y squared equals 100, and we're going to perform a left side, right side check. Our left side of our equation is x squared plus y squared. The right side of our equation is 100. And we're going to substitute in the x and y values of the point for negative 9. The x value is 4. We're going to square it. The y value is negative 9. We're going to square that. 4 squared is 16. Negative 9 squared, remember, squaring a negative number makes it positive, so negative 9 squared is 81. And 81 plus 16 is 97. Well, 97 and 100 are not equal. So what that can tell us is that this point, 4, negative 9, will not lie. So what this can tell us is the point, 4, negative 9, will not lie on the circle. In order for it to lie on the circle, the left side and right side have to be equal. We see that the left side is actually less than the right side. That's the less than symbol. If this is true, and the right side reflects what your radius is, because the left side is less than the right side, we can say that the point 4, negative 9 has to be inside the circle. It's not outside the circle, otherwise the left side would be greater than the right side. So to summarize, our equation of a circle, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, defines circles based on their radius. If you're given an equation of a circle, it's easy to figure out what the radius is by square rooting the right side. And if you need to prove whether a point lies on the inside, or outside, or even on the circle, do a formal left side, right side check to prove or see if it's less than, equal, or greater than the right side. Say